This Lisa Bubari podcast is being brought to you by Heal Within International, elevating lives of children without mothers. Join our journey. Log on to healwithin-intl.org. Denisha, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for gracing this stage. I know you're the one who always interviews everyone else. Um, if you didn't know, if you haven't read, Danisha has her own show on OWN TV, correct? Yes. So she was doing all the interviews and of celebrities, and we have her today. So change of role. How do you like this? I, I like it so far. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Instead of me introducing you, take a few moments and introduce yourself, and then we'll start the interview. Okay. Well, first of all, I don't know um, if you guys have read it, but my, my path was um, an unusual path. Uh, a lot of family dysfunction. Um, my mother was a drug addict and was in and out of my life most of my life. My father was very, very young when I was born. Um, so I became kind of a, a, a very responsible, serious child. I was always doing work, always trying to achieve. I skipped two grades. I ultimately um, graduated uh, high school at 16, went to UCLA, and uh, graduated there with two degrees in communications and business. And my whole life was, thank you, <laughs> my whole life was a very um, achievement-oriented life. And there was a lot of trauma along the way. And I wasn't even aware of that feeling of trauma and how it was basically putting a, a parking brake on my entire life. So even though I was achieving things and getting certain places, it was really when I became pregnant with my daughter after graduating uh, college and her father was ultimately diagnosed with cancer and died when she was 10 weeks old that my whole world kind of came crashing down around me it was there was really nothing um, there was no place to run after that there was nothing to achieve it was there was it was it was real life became very very real I went back to work I was laid off then I was at a crossroads because he, I was broken um, emotionally, financially, mentally, going through all kinds of physical things um, as a new mother. And I really didn't have tools. My mother wasn't in my life. I didn't know how to be a mother. And I knew I didn't want to be the mother that I had. And obviously, it wasn't the mother that she wanted to be. She didn't have those tools either. So. I really started on a, a journey of um, finding women and mentors and and um, reaching out in ways of, of growth and getting through my pain and I had a very very bumpy road along the way um, but I went into commercial real estate which I think the, the reason I made that decision it's a very male dominated highly competitive business um, but I made that decision because I was like, I have nothing else to lose. Every, there's, it could not get any worse from here. Um, well, obviously it could, but it, it, it was pretty bad. So I was like, well, I'll just do this commission-based thing, and if it screws up, I'm still broke. Well, nothing wrong, nothing wrong there. Um, so I went into it. Um, my first year, I couldn't. I stopped going to the mailbox. For what? I couldn't pay a bill. Nobody's writing me letters, so I wasn't going to depress myself by going to the mailbox. I would sneak my daughter into daycare and sneak out because I didn't have the money <laughs> to pay a lot of times. Um, I was uh, really, really struggling, but I was working 80 hours a week. I was barely sleeping at night, and the first seven months I didn't make a dime, but then the, last, the second five months of that year, I made $216,000 something like 212, 216, and it, it revolutionized my life. And I had a mentor at that time mm. who genuinely believed in me, and even though I didn't believe in me, I believed that he wasn't stupid. And he, if he believed in me, he was pretty smart, and he must be right about something. But, and he had told me, that you'll be making $300,000 within three years if you do what I tell you to do. And I said, is this a cussing audience? Are you guys okay with cussing sometimes? 
because I cuss a lot, and, and I <laughs> unless the ki unless kids are in the room, there are the no only kids in the room. room. Go for it. So I said, "You're full of shit." Um, but if you're half right, if if I can get out of this place, then then I can change the course of my life and the course of my daughter's life, which was, of course, my huge why. And I wanted to be a new mother. I wanted to give her everything that I did not have. And so when I started doing that, it was the course, the changing of a, a lot of things. So after that first year, I doubled my income the next year. I mentored the rookie of the year. As, and I was in this male-dominated business, winning all of these awards. And of course, being accused of sleeping with my clients. But <laughs> there's that. Accused? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think it just was a, a, a life-changing um, period of my life, and it was, it was the pain um, and the tragedy that I ultimately transitioned into a motivator for myself, and, um, and obviously the, the beauty of the birth of my daughter. And from there, I built a real estate team, a real estate portfolio. Stella has helped actually build that portfolio, so definitely, she's an amazing resource. <laughs> um, and and now I've got the number one uh, commercial real estate team at Keller Williams for the last. Yay! Four. Thank you. Power. We met when four months ago. Mm -hmm. But four months ago, it was right before the holidays, and we were both invited to an event that was doing a fundraising for human trafficking. And as we were sitting there, can we be frank? Of course. All right. We're, we're all good to talk raw, right? OK. Someone was trying to hit on her. <laughs> and I was standing there, and he felt uncomfortable because it was like I was, it's like you're a third wheeler. Can you just move away? And she was so graciously composed and wonderful and he even gave her card and she said thank you and we looked at each other and it was the beginning of that smile sometimes all we have to do is just that connection I'm here to support you I am witnessing your presence and this is what's happening right here a few moments after that we started conversing and then it was at the parking lot Five minutes in the parking lot, you were dragging the ice bucket. This woman, this incredible woman, is dragging this huge ice bucket, so I started helping her. We're getting to the car. By the time we got to the car in about five, six minutes, I felt a connection with her story. A week ago, a week later, I emailed her, didn't get anything. No, it was a text. Mm -hmm. Two weeks later, I texted and I said, I don't know anything about you, and I didn't. And I said, I have an event. Would you be my speaker? She said, what kind of an event? And I said, it's a women's empowerment. She says, yes, that's all. And she didn't know anything about this, and I didn't know who she was. But this is what I told her, if you remember. I said, sometimes it's all uh, having a, a big name on a, ce a celebrity, but you're a celebrity on its own. And then I look at her website. And then I find out about who she is. And I'm like, oh! So for someone who we meet at certain places, human trafficking, and in the garage, what you told me, and in the parking lot, to come to share your story. And I believe this is the first time you shared your story. Oh. In public? No, no, no. I, okay, I, I good. So I'm a, I'm a sharer. Oh, okay, good. I don't get embarrassed. Why would I? You know, so. Exactly. We're, we all have a story, and we come from where we are. So what was the unique uniqueness about the f your story that has when you talk about being in the lowest point i believe sometimes it's we move away from pain or the reward is so much greater 
That's where change happens. Was the pain so bad? And what was the trigger? What was the unique challenge? Not a regular challenge, but what was something special, unique, that made you turn around and say, enough is enough? Um, I think there's... Unusual or unlikely. I think that when you're in pain, there's like levels of pain. I think when you're crying or screaming or yelling or angry, like there, there's that very outward pain that you're present in that moment. Um, and I think that there's a lower level, at least in my experience, of pain where you are completely numb. Mm. You can't really feel it anymore because it's just too much. And I think when I got to the numb place and the future was so bleak at that time, um, I had become, I was this achievement, achievement child and then I was a statistic. I was a single mom, you know, on my own. And I was like, if you read statistics, it's like 70% of single moms are financially destitute. So I was like, I, I can't do this. Um, but the trigger for me, it's, it was one day when I was home in my little apartment that had no air conditioning and my daughter was so hot, she was sweating. And I just, it, it, I just was like, I'm not, I was substitute teaching at that time and I had just been laid off and I was like, I'm not going to struggle. She's not going to have that life. And seeing that for, for me was, um, I mean, it was on my first year business plan, a apartment with air conditioning. <laughs> Um, and so that was that was kind of the, I mean, obviously I talk about her. She is my everything. You right. know, she turned 18 last Thursday, and I yes balls a thousand yes. tears. Um, mostly from just being so 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 proud of her, mm -hmm. but um, you know, just a transition. She's transitioning, and and our journey as through her childhood is complete. Beautiful. Um, but it was definitely watching her um, and having her as my motivator that triggered, I'm gonna do it. And it kept me in it. Every time I would be discouraged, every time I was um, you know, falling back and, and, and in my own heart, like this is too much, it's too hard. I need to find a way to make this simpler. It was her that, I, that made me like, no, actually you're gonna take that risk. You're going to keep working right. and, and keep, keep trying. How do you come to define who you are today? She's got some good questions. Um, I define myself uh, and myself, my, I change. You know, who I was last year was a different person. Um, and becoming a wife and, and inheriting three more kids in a blended family has 100% changed me um, and I just I think that uh, the way I define myself is how I feel about myself um, and so when I'm recognizing that I'm thinking bad things about myself or being critical or um, discouraged then I, I get back to who I know I really am and as a child of God who he believes I am um, and that, that gets me back on track so in the morning when you wake up and are you going to share who you are married to? No. Super nice guy. <laughs> Super nice guy. Yeah, big nice guy. And uh, they also have a show together. But waking up in the morning today, every time that you wake up, like when I wake up, I've got my dog. What do you wake up to? <laughs> Actually, my dog wakes me up. <laughs> I wake up to my husband. Well, most I days. mean, uh, but I wake up to. Um, I have a planner that I use. Okay. Um, so there's my uh, my husband, and then there's my boyfriend, my planner, and I wow. I live and breathe this planner. And every um, year, it's, a, it's called a law of attraction planner. Okay. Um, and I'm a huge vision board person. I spend a ton of time just uh, envisioning things, conversations even, um, how I want them to go and how I, under ideal circumstances they would go. But I wake up to my planner mm -hmm. and I think about which parts of my day I want to spend doing what and who I want to reconnect with or connect with and, and how I want to feel at the end of the day.
And that was the business part of it and the personal? So you Absolutely. have this to-do list? Of all both of, of them. Them. All of that. How many of you have a to-do list? How many of you are women? <laughs> oh, Come on. Are you I'll saying that men don't have a to-do list? Well, mine doesn't. Oh. <laughs> He thinks he's got um, it all up here, yes. yeah. Yeah, because my to-do list is mostly he has in my, my to-do head. list for him. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so as we are looking at when there is an unexpected challenge that happens, either personally or professionally, how do you cope? How do you change? Or how do you manifest what it is to align yourself? As you said, I walked in and I, w I just left everything and I walked in. How do you shift that? Well, some pain needs to be processed. Some pain needs to be released. Mm. And um, when I'm in a bad place, number one, I, I used to be so critical of myself for being in a bad place. Like, oh, now, now you're this, and now you're feeling bad about yourself, and now you're sleeping in, or you know, now whatever it was, I used to be so critical of myself, but now I think I've become an observer of that like the space I'm in at that moment so if I'm if I'm feeling sad I put words to it like what what am I feeling right now I'm feeling discouraged I'm feeling overwhelmed I'm feeling um, angry or oh my God, that's the exercise I give to my clients really? I am what I right. am <laughs> and I recognize that it's going to pass I know that and I know that, that these things that either I need to come in and, and re learn whatever lesson it is that is in that moment what it, why am i so angry okay why am i really angry what what's underneath that anger because we know anger is a secondary emotion it's not the thank you <laughs> it's not the the real emotion there's there's a hurt there's a pain under there so i i really try to look at that and then just recognize that it's going to pass and, and how many people truly have the time to do all that people it's who need to learn you should you have, to have a lot of practice of that's it, right. or else you're just going to be constantly in that space because that's the only way that you really get out of it, and and or that it can pass through you a little bit more freer, for, more freely. Like it doesn't stay with you because you're not sitting there holding on to what you think you're angry about. You're just observing the fact that you're angry. Does that make sense? Does it make sense? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Okay. If you had a nugget. Um, a, a gem information or a message for our audience what would that message be as a woman who's gone through it you see I, I believe a lot of people get stuck in the story of heritage uh, this is my family or I have the same DNA or I you know everybody we come a lot of people not everybody blaming the past or blaming parents or all that how do you shift it and what's the message that you would give to our audience especially women to realize where we are is not where we're going um, the, as somebody who's done a lot of interviews um, and watched a lot of stories and I, I really believe in connecting with other women and other stories and seeking that mm. I mean all of you women must believe in it too because you're here and and when I feel like um, just disconnected from things I believe that our, our whole purpose of being here is to connect that is the exactly why we're here there, there is no, no other purpose there's nothing else that we are here to do except connect with each other and I think that remembering that especially people who are challenging in our lives people who are um, people who are inspirational for us that that you can choose where your connections are and and the lessons that you can learn and even in those challenging situations and those challenging relationships to connect to it to understand what 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 is in that and if you if there's a nugget that I, I take away that is why I do any of these things is because I'm getting right here uh, um, Marie Marie hi yeah. Marie yes. okay didn't take French but um, <laughs> like I connected with that I, I, I learned something from that and that that filled me if you guys didn't feel that energy it was Beautiful. it was powerful 
And I think that the more you do that, if you do that, if you make a practice of connecting with other people, connecting with yourself, then I think that that is the, the most important work that we have here. Thank you. So what do you do for fun? <laughs> fun with four kids, baseball games. Um, uh, no, we do, I do fun with my girlfriends. Okay. Um, that's fun. I started doing paint and sips. You guys ever done that? Yes. Amazing, amazing. What so is that? Fun. A paint and sip. Oh, oh, paint and sip. Where you get a little glass of wine and yeah. then you have somebody teach you paint art. Paint and wine. <laughs> what is it? I have uh, someone who will recognize. They said, I like to wine and it doesn't have to be with an H in there. You're right. <laughs> yeah. How's that? I'm a whiner. No H. <laughs> yeah, but um, no H. But it was, no, that was, I, I love paint and sip, um, yoga, mm. you know, those practices uh, sometimes just being by myself in a room <laughs> is fun for me <laughs> for a little bit, but that's, that's my definition of fun. How is it being on Oprah's show, and now you're not doing it because you're so busy, but what, does, what did that do for Denisha's business and career? Um, I mean, I mean, no, you know, sometimes it really, celebrities say I didn't, I didn't need all that because of too much attention, and I'm talking about media. Um, it definitely, I, I ended up doing a, a sh television show on Fox as a real estate expert. Um, so it definitely did a great thing for my career. But the most important thing that I think doing that show taught me is that my vision board really freaking works because wow. I put me and an own network logo on my vision board and I did absolutely nothing except tweet, post on facial, uh, social media networks and just talk about my story and talk about the things that I love that were associated with Oprah and one day they called me and they said we'd like you to audition to be a host. I am a real estate broker. I don't have an agent. I don't do these things. Why is somebody calling me to audition as a host? You asked for it. I, I had put it out there, I put it up on the board and I let it go and then I was like, oh gosh, this is crazy. So not getting it, but look, you know, at least I got the, uh, the call, which is amazing. And then I went and there were hundreds of people auditioning as the, the host and for some reason they picked the girl who could read the, the thing the worst. <laughs> Um, but I think it was, it was, um, that was something that in my mind, whenever I'm thinking about my vision board and thinking of something that's maybe too big or how would I achieve that, I remember that. And that, that is really what I took from that. And then, of course, all of the, the nuggets that I got from the Super Soul Sunday guests and the Oprah experts who are all geniuses and, and walking amazing people that I got to sit down with and, and learn from. So that, that to me was the best part, even though there was some business stuff, but the best part was what I learned in that way. The experience of it. See, even that was a learning experience. What's your favorite book? What book has inspired you? Or Right now, I'm reading a book called How We Love. How We Love. Mm -hmm. My favorite book is probably The Four Agreements. Really right, perfect. of course. Um, and that, that one's hard to beat. <laughs> but the book I'm reading now is called How We Love, and it talks about your love patterns um, in intimate relationships and how your childhood trauma, your relationship with your parents, basically affects that love pattern. And, and then it also helps you understand your spouse's or your significant other's love pattern and why you are together and why you have conflict and how to resolve it. So I'm kind of digging that book right now, but my favorite book is Four Agreements. Beautiful, thank you. The Four Agreements? Okay. Um, would you like to take some questions from our audience? Does our audience, do you have Oh. Okay. Anybody have a question? Yes. Uh, isn't it Rodriguez? It's a red and white book. <laughs> <laughs> really big letters. How we love, and it, I think it's actually a couple. I think it's a uh, two. It's two. Um, it's father and son. No, no, no. It's a. I think it's a. I think it's a wife and a husband. I think so. 
Yeah, How We Love. And they have a workbook that goes with it. Oh, How We Love. Okay. Yes. How do you create words? Work life. Work life balance. Work life. Work life. My number one joke is what's that? You know, like, I don't. Um, but I did interview Ariana Huffington, and she had an amazing um, way, perspective shift on it. She says, I am where I am fully and presently. So if I'm at work, I am fully and present at work. If I am with my, my children or my husband or my friends, I am fully and presently there. That is the best way to have balance because you're not constantly being pulled when you're at home about work or when you're at work about home or those type of things. So that is the only balance that there can possibly be is just being present where you are. Um, I think the second Go ahead and second question, but for you to also know, I, uh, as a compliment to being present, Eckhart Tolle has a book called Now, and the power of now is truly being present, and yeah, so your second question? Well, we have more we than have one more. man in here. here. We, we honor men. our men in here. Hi, Andy. Yes. Yes, there are some men, and we welcome them. Um, you know, we're always being pulled in all these different directions. How do you keep your dream going? Um, I, I keep saying it, but the vision board and my planner, because I feel like. It, the, the daily get up, take care of business, come home, do dinner, homework, what, if you can get very pulled into doing activities and, and at the more tasks you're doing, the, the, unless those tasks are designed to achieve your goal, you are going to just be very busy. There's a difference between being busy and being productive. Mm. Um, so that's where I think when I'm thinking about my day and spending my time, that's where that's what keeps me on track. Is I of course I have a planner, of course I have places to be and things to do, but what is it that I am intentionally doing? What am I spending my time that says, okay, I this is where I uh, what I want for me, what I want for my family from me, and that's how I stay on track in that way. Does that make sense? How often do you change your vision board? My vision board, uh, it is a fluid object. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, why did I put that thing up there? Um, but I just honestly, I'm, I'm constantly, when I think of something new, I, I note it and I write it down like, oh yeah, I want, I want that. I want more of that. Okay, so it's not a vision board framed on a wall because oh, mine yeah, it is. is. Okay. Oh. All right. Because mine has a glass on it. I can't change it. Do no, I you have to be off? able to change it. Okay, I'm taking the glass off. Peel away. <laughs> Peel away. All right. Well, how much do we change, right? Constantly. Change is constant. I've changed, I changed my jacket three times today. <laughs> like, I need, like, I have to be able to, like, what is my real mood right now? What is it that I'm truly pursuing right now? And sometimes it's completely work-oriented. Mm. And I'm like, I'm making... 75 calls by noon, you know, and I'm, and sometimes that's my mode, that's where I'm at, and then other times I'm like, I'm going to a first spa day, and I, I need that, or my connection with my, my girlfriends, or my kids, I did individual dates with my kids, amazing, best time ever, um, for my birthday, that was the best, but I would say, for sure, just make it fluid, make it like complete, make it cover every single part of your life, every single part of your life, and, and let it change as you change. Evolve. Evolve. I like That's my... That's why we are like... I know. <laughs> so I have one more question. Any more questions? Yes. What's your, is that the, what's yeah. your next big vision for yourself? Excellent question. 
Um, I am developing something um, for women that I think it is, is the real purpose of my life and is, going, is, is what changed my life, what I'm talking about today. Um, and it is not done, but it will be done this year. And, um, and that is the, the, the legacy that I want to leave is, is that, is, is the, the thing that I'm developing. I can't, I can't, it sounds so like, can't, I can't get or into I it. Or I choose not to. Oh, I choose. It's a choice that she's But I'm choosing it for like, not because I don't want to share it, because that's, that's the point of sharing it, but I'm choosing it because it is incomplete, but it is being hibernating. Complete. That's right. It's hibernating. <laughs> One more question right here. So I'm going to ask you because I think I've started a vision board like five times. Were you like, oh, vision board, great idea, I'm going to do it, like, and hop into it and did it? Or was did it take, you know, I feel like I'm stopping and starting all the time. What about you? Was it, I'm in, or did you? I was not sold. Yeah. But Oprah told me to do it, right? <laughs> so Oprah has this whole vision board. She she introduced. I do a before vision I, before board Before I workshop. did own or anything like that. I do a workshop on vision board. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it up. But um, I used to have it like this little tiny thing. Yeah. And then I had it on my phone. And what I learned about vision boards is you, the, the practice of not only writing down the goal, but creating the visual image of the goal, then putting that goal up and then seeing it and other people seeing it. Oh. Because that part, Don't that hide part it. is, I, I really feel like those things actually trigger things in their brains. Mm. And, in, and in that, and that they become part of the vision too. And so now my vision board is like eight feet by eight feet in my office. <laughs> and so, and I want everybody to go look at it, and I don't care that it's a little bit embarrassing on some things, you know, but then in other ways, it's really just, uh, I'm incorporating everybody into this vision. And my, my husband, he swears to this day, he bought me a purse. I don't really believe in putting a ton of material things on there, but I was like, oh, this is a cute purse, and I just put it up. He bought me that purse. <laughs> and he was like, I was like, you, you saw it because somebody else pointed it out to me. They said, that was on your vision board. And then I said, was it? And I went back and I saw it. And I was like, you saw it on the vision board. And he said, I promise you, I don't remember seeing it on the vision board. We are all energy. So this is why I'm, I'm, I'm passionate about this stuff because I know it works. It works, you have to put it up, you have to put it out there, and you have to keep yourself triggered and, and seeing it. So I think you guys have a peek into what I'm developing. but A bigger vision board. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you, ladies. Well, I Thank have you for one more. So much. Oh, you have one. Oh, okay. I do. <laughs> now that you are here, um, I know before you came here, you sent me a message last night. Her grandma is uh, not doing well, so I want to thank you. No matter what is happening in your personal life that you carved this time to be here with us. And as a woman, I grace you, thank you for the lineage that you come from, from grandmother, from mom, to you, to your daughter. And with that, would you please complete the sentence? Denisha is. Evolving. Yeah. Thank you all.